You're listening to the Spare No Arrows podcast, a show that equips Christians to stand against our anti-Christian culture. My name's Cody Lawrence, and I'm here to discuss culture, politics, theology, and building Christendom for the glory of God with courage, biblical truth, and sound doctrine. Hey, welcome back. This podcast, as you know, if you've been here before, or if you just listened to the intro, is from a conservative Christian perspective. And so if you disagree with me, or if you uh, disagree with the reformed Christian perspective, uh, sorry, you, you can expect to disagree with this episode. But as such, uh, typically I criticize, or often I criticize the left. Um, I also think I, because I want to be, I want my side to be as powerful as possible. I want the right to win. I want the reformed Christian position to eventually uh, take over all of conservatism. I want us to win, right? And so that means sometimes I have to level criticism against the right. Now, this isn't going to be an example of one of those things where like one of the the rules of the left, where if you criticize the left, if you're if you're like one of those soft, squishy evangelical pastors, or just you know, fake conservatives in general, this isn't one of those examples where to criticize the left, you have to give a criticism of your side as well. This isn't one of those examples. Uh, this is, I think, a legitimate criticism that our side has to watch out for. And built within this criticism is an exhortation to have better tactics so that we can be more effective combating the evil culture that we're in. And so here's a thing that I think we should consider. We all know the saying that conservatives don't have their own platform. This is a a very common, especially from people on my team, um, my my brand of hardcore extremist, quote unquote, or at least, you know, that's what people call us, conservatism. It, so this is a, like bro- broadly accepted. This isn't even controversial that people say that conservatives don't really have their own platform. Uh, like conservative politicians, uh, they don't actually conserve anything. They are, their agenda it can be summed up by saying they are merely anti left. They're trying to resist whatever the left is doing. They, they don't actually usually have an agenda that they're trying to push themselves, things that they're trying to accomplish themselves. The left, on the other hand, does. They very much have an agenda. They have a plan. They, they have very clear things that they want to happen in the world, um, and they're doing a great job at accomplishing it. Now, their agenda and the, the actual things that they want to accomplish in the world are completely evil and they're insane, right? And those things should be resisted. Um, but their tactic, the strategy that they're actually using, the the sincerity of their belief in their godless insanity is kind of admirable. <laughs> it means they actually believe what they say they believe. Conservatives, on the other hand, if they believe that, say, abortion is murder, um, instead of just saying, what did Trump say recently? Like, I'm going to ban all transgender surgeries uh, without parent consent. Okay, well, if you actually believed that transgender surgeries were evil, you would want to ban all of them. Now, I don't want to argue the point about you know tr- Trump saying that, or if if that was a wise political decision or not, uh, you know, or, or like what he's actually going to do once he gets in office. That's beside the point. But the point is, truly conservatives, we actually have to be against all transgender surgeries, not just the transgender surgeries uh, without parent consent, right? We can't just be against uh, drag queens uh, twerking in front of children at, at reading events, right? We need to be against uh, s- sexual deviancy of all kinds. We need to be against homosexual marriage in general. Uh, if, if we hate tyranny, we have to be uh, fighting against the idea that the government can just redefine marriage uh, whenever they feel like it uh, to include men marrying men. Well, that's not actually the definition of marriage. And so instead of just resisting the left going further and further, what true conservatives need to do, uh, what true, you know, at, at least biblical conservatives, true conservatives who actually care about conserving reality, uh, which we have very few of those these days, but those of us who do care about those kinds of things can't settle 
by just saying like, well, you know, as long as you don't push past this line, like that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll give you your civil unions or we'll give you your, your whatever, uh, as long as you don't, you know, you stay out of my bedroom and I'll stay out of yours kind of thing. Like, uh, no, you can't redefine marriage. There's no such thing as a same sex marriage. Uh, a child in the womb or outside of the womb, still a child, still murder. If you kill the baby, right? It, it, before it's born or after it's born, um, still murder. And so it should be treated like murder. Anyway, hopefully I made my point. Um, so conservatives politically, we don't really have our own platform, uh, because politicians, their primary goal is, I think, uh, broadly to get reelected and the left it, so that they can get reelected. Um, well, in general, this applies to both sides to get reelected. You need to get as many votes as possible, right? Of course. And to get as many votes as possible, you need to appease as many people as possible. And so as our culture generally, because the, the failure of our churches and the failure of our pastors and the failure of our fathers, um, because our culture is becoming more and more godless and insane, um, the way to appease the culture, which is what the left is doing, is to be godless and insane with them. And because conservatives are just slightly behind, we're a little slower on the uptake, uh, we're not quite as godless as in, and insane as the left. But we also realize that, well, to get as many votes as possible, we cannot actually take the extreme position on the left that abortion is murder or that marriage cannot be redefined by the government or that the government does not have total control over people or what they wear or what they put on their faces or um, if, you know, what time their church is allowed to be open. They don't want to take those extreme positions. And so instead, what they do to appease as many people as possible in our godless and insane culture to get as many votes as possible is to uh, just resist the left because they know, well, a lot of people in the country, they don't like what the left is doing. And so I don't want to have an actual platform. I just want to resist what they're doing because I want to get as many of these quote unquote conservative votes as possible. That's uh, bad, but that's the way politics works right now in our godless and insane country. But I want to comment specifically on something that's happening on social media right now that I think is indicative of a kind of strategy that people on uh, conservatives in general, but I think this is something that people even on my team who are aware of the rhinos out there, aware of the fake conservatives who don't actually have a platform, um, something that they do. So here's what I've noticed. There's a meme going around that, that uh, this single meme isn't the core of the problem. Uh, of course, but this is this kind of thing happens all the time, and I'll give other examples. But the meme in particular that's going around right now is the uh, Kamala Harris uh, being drunk thing that's going around. If if you haven't seen it, basically Kamala Harris did some kind of speech and she slurred a word, uh, <laughs> and generally it is true that she isn't a very good speaker. She's never been a good vice president. She's failed in tremendous ways over and over and over. Um, she doesn't say anything. Like, very similar to Biden, except Bi Kamala actually has the mental capacity to string words together. Um, but she still, she chooses not to, I guess. So in that way, you know, she might be worse than Biden because Biden had his uh, senility holding him back. But Kamala, she's young and her brain functions and she's still a moron, right? So like Joe Biden, I don't think was a moron. He was just evil and senile. Kamala is evil and stupid, right? So um, it's a serious problem either way. <laughs> but there, I've, I've talked about this before on the podcast. There are actual problems uh, that we can focus on. There are like for example, the things I just did. I think the the stupidity, the insanity, the godlessness, the fact that she um, is not a good speaker, the fact that the the it, <laughs> the things that she does say often makes absolutely no sense. I think something that we should not be focusing on is the fact that she accidentally slurred a word. You know, sometimes on my podcast I mess up a word, and then I might go back and edit it or or whatever. But another thing you could do. Uh, is like if you're a public speaker, you do public speaking and you mess up a word, you have to think to yourself, what is worse for me in this situation? What makes me look worse? Is it to 
ignore the fact that I slurred the word and just move on like nothing happened, which could be a good strategy. Or if you're public speaking, it could be a good thing to do to just stop and say, excuse me, and then correct yourself. Both of those are legitimate options. And I think Kamala Harris in that speech, she wasn't drunk, probably. (laughs) And to insinuate that she downs a bottle of Jack Daniels before she goes to speeches, I think is, I mean, it's funny, but obviously it's dishonest. Hopefully nobody actually believes that she does that. Um, and I, I don't really think she does. It is it is a funny meme. It's funny to insinuate that she's drunk. But uh, I, I don't know that that's a good strategy for us to take on social media because of the legitimate problems that there are. I think the same thing applied to Joe Biden. The, uh, we would post memes on social media like um, Joe Biden set up funny word one time. And, and you know, for, for that matter, people would do the same thing with Trump. Like Trump said a silly thing one time instead of actually focusing on his policies or what he meant. Now, what we can focus on with Joe Biden is the fact that he's obviously senile or the fact that he's not um, capable of being president because he's not wanting to renew his next term as president. And so he's not suitable for for run, rerunning for office because the whole Democrat party realizes it now. But he is suitable for finishing his presidency this year. Uh, that doesn't really make sense. So there are plenty of things to criticize with Joe Biden. We can even criticize in general the fact that he cannot string words together into sentences. But when we have to, or, or you know, like the fact that he trips up uh, Air Force One and has done it multiple times, actually. that That's an example of something that people did for Trump. They uh, they criticized him that he tripped. Uh, like, he actually tripped on, uh, like, in an airport or on Air Force One or something. There was a video of him tripping. And so they were like, oh, is Trump getting old? <laughs> and so that, I think, is an example of something that we're just making up to create problems uh, to you know, have talking points to throw stupid nonsense at the right. And from my perspective, whenever I see somebody criticizing one of my guys with stuff like that, like, you know, I I like Trump. I'm going to vote for Trump. I've got no uh, qualms saying that. But when somebody criticizes Trump with something like, yo, well, look, he tripped up a thing one time. Look, I've tripped before. People trip, right? And so I think if that's the best you got, you don't actually have any real problems with Trump, which means he's probably a good guy. And so when a rational person sees us criticizing people with stupid problems, um, they might kind of think, wow, do they not have any real ammo to shoot with? Um, Now with Joe Biden, he's tripped multiple times. He's um, showed that he seems to be incapable of standing up for long periods of time. So I, I think the tripping can go into a, uh, a more broad narrative about Joe Biden's health. But the Trump thing, it's an isolated incident. Uh, it's not going to happen much. Just like the Kamala Harris uh, slurring her words thing. If she slurred her words all the time, she could be drunk. She could be downing bottles of whiskey before going to uh, speeches. Uh, or she could have some kind of developing mental illness that is causing her to slur her words. She could have uh, some kind of brain disease. You know, like these are things we have to take into consideration. But because she slurred her words one time, there is a uh, these ongoing memes of her being drunk. Now, let's just say, let's let's give us some grace for a second. Let's just say that the people on my side who are sharing these memes about Kamala being drunk are playing four-dimensional meme chess. And nobody actually believes that she binge drinks before her speeches. Um, but because we're such big meme lord internet trolls and we're poking fun at the left, it's it's funny and it's a good thing to share. And you know, hopefully people actually start believing that Kamala is a drunkard, even if we don't really believe those things. Uh, so... Even if, here, here's the problem that I have. Here's the problem that I have with uh, with memes like this or, or in, in general, this kind of strategy for attacking the left, right? Uh, it appears as though you do believe these things. Uh, a lot of the people sharing memes like this or, or stuff in general, you, we do the, it, it, it could apply to anybody. It could apply to a theologian you don't like or it could apply to a book. Uh, you know, like let's say you hate a book and... The book has a lot of really bad content in it, uh, and you could attack the arguments. Uh, but you choose to say, oh, look, there's a typo. 
in the book. Or let's say you hate Marxism. And instead of actually attacking the beliefs or the policies of Marxists, you choose to say, well, a lot of them are fat and they have blue hair. Like, yeah, that's it's totally fine to make fun of that. So I'm not saying we can't post Kamala Harris's drunk memes. So that's not what I'm saying at all. It's totally cool to make fun of people. <laughs> It's totally cool to make fun of the fact that a lot of Marxists are very overweight and they have blue hair and they are often homosexual. Totally okay to make fun of that. But if it appears, I think, as though we actually believe that that is the core issue, I think that therein lies the problem. Uh, because it doesn't only appear to me that you believe those things, but it also appears to the left like you believe those things. And that makes us look like idiots to outsiders. Let's just say there are people on the fence, um, that, you know, semi-reasonable people, if, if it is semi-reasonable to be a centrist these days. Um, <laughs> let's just say there's some semi-reasonable person who's a centrist and they're looking at both sides and they're like, whoa, wait, Kamala Harris wasn't drunk. Why are all these people on the right sending these memes as if she is? That's kind of strange. Maybe Kamala is not that bad. Like, yeah, I didn't really like Joe Biden. You could say they voted for him back four years ago. And, you know, I'm kind of unsatisfied with Joe Biden. But, hey, if this is the best they got, then, I, you know, probably Kamala is not that bad. I think that's what that could potentially lead to. It makes us look stupid because our arguments are stupid. Here Now, of course, the left is going to think we're idiots anyway. But I think there's an appropriate way for us to look like idiots and there's an inappropriate way to look like idiots let them think we're idiots for not wanting to murder babies let the left think we're idiots for wanting to worship the one true god on sundays that's a good reason to make the left think we're an idiot let them think we're idiots for opposing public sexual degeneracy in front of children let them think we're idiots not because we're actually being idiots. I mean, don't let them think we're idiots because we're actually being idiots, right? So in other words, don't be an idiot. If we truly are being an idiot in one area and making it seem, even, even if it really is funny, like, again, like I said, it's not wrong to share those memes. You can do it a couple times, but if you if that starts becoming like a trend or like a main talking point, uh, like something that is repeated, which I've seen a lot now, like this is really spreading across uh, right-wing media. It's like, I don't, I really don't think Kamala's a, a drunkard. It, I mean, it could be, but I think we're just looking, we're making ourselves look stupid. You can call her stupid. You can say she laughs too much. You can say she's a diversity hire and watch the left get all angry, even though they're supposed to love diversity hires. But here I think is, a strategy that we should not take from the left. Uh, it is it is an admirable quality, like I said earlier, of the left that even though they believe something evil and godless and idiotic, that they actually are sincere about it and they follow through with their evil beliefs. Conservatives often do not follow through with their beliefs. They actually believe that uh, same-sex marriage is a sin, but conservative politicians have absolutely no interest in fighting towards uh, illegalizing same-sex marriage. That is inconsistent. That's bad. And so we can learn from the strategy of the left, if if we can even call it that. It should just be like a, it's a good, a good real strategy. What we should be doing is the same thing as them in that area. But what we should not be doing is taking all of the strategies that seem to be effective so far, like lying about your opponents. The left has found tremendous success in lying about their opponents. But that is not a good strategy for us to take. We need to be honest about our opponents because we know honesty ultimately is going to win. Uh, honesty is good. If there are legitimate problems with people, we should be honest about those problems. And if there are a lot of those problems, then we have absolutely no need to make up more problems. There's no need. Let's just be honest about the problems that exist. There are a plethora of problems with Kamala Harris. There's a ton 
So let's just focus on those. Let's talk about those. If she slurs a word in a debate, yeah, post some memes, make fun of her, and then move on to something else, right? Uh, but don't make making fun of your opponent for silly things a common tactic. It just makes us look bad. It makes us look like an idiot. If you have to use evil weapons like lies to beat your opponent, it means the good weapons aren't good enough. And uh, we do have good weapons against our opponents. And the good weapons absolutely are good enough. And so don't, don't even touch evil weapons. Don't touch the strategy of lying about your opponent. Um, because it's not going to be effective. If, if our goal as Christians is truth and faithfulness and godliness, we never, ever, ever have to lie about our opponents. We never have to try to convince people that our opponents are something that they're not because the thing that they are is already so bad. So let's stick with it. Uh, actually have good strategies for defeating our enemies, mainly, primarily, actually having a faithful agenda that we want to push and actually pushing it and holding our conservative politicians accountable to those things and holding our friends accountable on social media. Like, Hey man, there's actual problems we should be focusing on. So why don't we focus on those? Hey, you made it to the end of the episode. Thank you so much for sticking around. I would love to hear your thoughts about the episode. You can find me on Instagram at spare no arrows. Uh, or you can leave a comment on my YouTube channel. And hey, by the way, you can also listen to Spare No Arrows on the go. I have plenty of other episodes for you to listen to on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your audio podcast. <laughs>